This is the Zag Glassoline. This is technically Zag's toughest glass. That's what it says on the box, so it has to be true, right? Now, from what I've noticed, Zag has moved from the Glass Plus lineup over the last year and is now running everything under the Glass Elite brand name. I say it's technically Zag's toughest glass because the box says it uses aluminum silicate glass, but that's the same glass they use in the Defender, and that product, from my testing, isn't that strong. So how tough is that actually? That's what I'm gonna find out in this video, and I've got a treat for you guys. I finally finished Wilma, my edge testing unit. So I just spent the last two hours with Wilma with the screen protector. I've run out of edges to crack and I kind of realized I still have no good answer for edge testing yet. At Mobile Reviews, a Monty and I are looking for the best products for your devices by basing all our videos and reviews on actual usage. Now you might be wondering, why am I testing the edge of the screen protector? There's three facets to screen protectors. There's impact, there's scratch, and also the edge. The edge is always going to be weaker than, you know, the center part of the screen because on the center part of the screen, it's only been cut and polished, whereas on the edges, cut, grinded down or formed and then polished. So a company will either spend a lot of time polishing it to make it really smooth so there's no, like, tiny tiny cracks or cheap ones will spend less time or with a lesser grit so your edges will break a little quicker and that's why I need to test edges and I finally can boom so the next few minutes I'm going to talk about the features of the Zag product I'm going to do the impact test and I'm going to do the edge test I've already done the scratch test and then I'm going to compare it against similar products from Belkin as well as Otterbox the Belkin Invisa glass that you get from Apple and the Otterbox Amplify now when it comes to coverage the Zag glass elite extends slightly past the viewable area the gap between the case edge and the edge is going to be larger on the iPhone 11s because well that device is thicker. The edges of the screen protector aren't terribly noticeable, but they are still there, and if you're looking for it, will be felt every single time you swipe up or gesture from side to side. I had no issues with the adhesive on my screen protector even after peeling back the screen protector several times during the install. It was such a painful install because they just, I don't know, there was so much dust in that. I, I don't know what happened, but it was just so painful to do. Now, I do appreciate Zag's installation process as the frame plus tabs kind of makes it dummy proof, and that's kind of a rare thing for me to say about Zag products. As Zag's motto is generally charge maximum price for mediocre products. And the only product I've actually been surprised with is actually Zag's iPad keyboard case. That thing's actually pretty good. The oleophobic coating didn't feel anything special, though part of Zag's marketing fluff includes a trademark name called Clearpoint. After four weeks of usage, fingerprints still show up. The clarity from my perspective is no different than your typical screen protector as it will add that contrast of your screen a unnoticeable amount. The last thing I'll talk about is sensitivity and yeah, I didn't notice anything. Like it's even along the edges, you can easily get to the edges of your iPhone with this product. When it comes to scratch protection, as I showed in my video why camera protectors are stupid, the Zag Elite scratched at a medium hard seven, which is surprising to me because most screen protectors scratch at a hard six, soft six, sometimes a seven. So seeing it being scratched at a seven, Awesome. Surprising that Zag actually made their products better. So how about Impact? The old Glass Plus lineup claimed to have three times the shadow protection, whereas the Elites have four times. Now here's a neat little tidbit of information. The four times uh, claim is against traditional screen protectors. But on the Glass Plus, that three times is impact protection against an unprotected screen. So they're not even comparing apples to apples. This is being compared to other screen protectors. The old lineup was compared to like the actual screen. Now I'm quite certain that the glass that Apple uses in their devices is gonna be of the best quality. So Zag claiming to have more impact protection on lesser glass this is an amazing piece of marketing fluff but in a fluff let's introduce the screen protector to Bertha all right so we've got our semi cracked pane of glass I'll start it right here let's be ambitious and start it 85 85 is there and like this piece of glass is now almost unusable. Like I've got that area to do a drop test and maybe the same reflections, that area. Like that one on the corner just annihilated like 30% at 85. Like that's, that's no good, Zag. <laughs> we'll find it. So this is what happens when the screen protector stops sticking to the thing. You get some crazy drop height. The, it's crazy that this piece broke at 85. 
and these ones were about a hundred and then I dropped it a ton after the adhesive wouldn't stick on. So it's, it feels like it's decent glass. I'm actually surprised, happy that it worked out in Zag's favor because I'm always so down on them. But this is fairly inconclusive. And I guess this kind of speaks towards the amount of adhesive they kind of use because this is the first time that I've had a screen protector screen protector's adhesive come off like that. Yeah, no, that kind of makes sense, I guess. So if we tally up the results, if we were to record the first drop, which broke at 85 or less, that would put in the quality tempered glass towards the upper end. But if we were to take the highest drop before it, before the adhesive started failing, that would have put it at about 105, which puts it above the OtterBox Amplify as well as the Belkin Invisible Glass Ultra. But I will note that the other two products, those broke at consistently at those heights, whereas in the Zag Elite Glass just broke like willy dilly. So that's the impact. So if you thought those results were kind of inconsistent, well, just wait till what I show you with the, uh, the edge testing. So this is Wilma, and this is basically just a, a movable platform. Everything's been weighed out, and this is the Zag Glass Elite. And so I have chipped the crap out of this entire product. Now, the problem that I ran into, well, first of all, is that trying to break, trying to find edges along the screen protector that aren't cracked is tough after you've dropped Bertha on it <laughs> half a dozen or more than a dozen times, a couple dozen times. Um, but what was most um, surprising to me was the inconsistency with this product. So what stood out to me was that the corners, most corners were incredibly tough. Um, but certain edges, depending on where some would break when I would put uh, Wilma's tip onto the uh, edge and some would like take like 10 pounds of, uh, not pressure, but 10 pounds on my scale. So this product is seemingly very, very inconsistent, I'll say because I've never had a screen protector go from breaking at 85 and then just jumping up 20 something centimeters and breaking at 105. Um, these edges, as I just said, some of them could take an amazing amount of pressure. The other stuff like could barely, wouldn't take the weight of this, uh, of this platform. And this platform isn't really that heavy. At the end of the day, I think it puts maybe four pounds of weight onto the edge. So it's not that much. Um, one of the, it's funny because it's like an actual test. I've been testing, this is the third iteration of Wilma. Uh, the first two iterations I used instead of like wood, I used uh, metal pipes as well as, or PVC pipes was the first one. And so I was testing it on brand new screen protectors. So like you had so much space to play with, but when you start cracking stuff like this, like this is a pretty rough looking screen protector now. So it's, I just, the results were just so inconsistent. And I guess that's the question I have for you guys is, do I rank in my ranking of screen protectors? Do I rank it higher? Do I put it up where like the Belkin Invisible Glass is? Do I put it up where the Autobox Amplify is, where the Flow Lab Nano Armor is? Or do I knock it down a notch? I am gonna retest this once I'm gonna to try to do the warranty thing on it. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Based on what you've seen in this video, does Zag deserve a recommendation from me? or a maybe from me. So that's all I got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. I think I'm done reviewing Zag stuff for a while, other than I did buy their silly glass screen protector for the cameras. I'll review that. But after that, oh no, and the iPad thing. But after that, I'm done. That's not true. I bought a bunch of Gear 4 cases and Zag bought out Gear 4 a while back. So there's a lot of gear, Zag stuff coming up. Oh boy. First time watching my videos, this is part of the isolation video series where I'm doing a video a day. 
Again, going to start phasing that out, and I'm just going to start doing a review video a day. I think it's sustainable. I think. Uh, that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. This is the Zag Glass Elite. It's technically Zag's toughest glass. This is the Zag Glass Elite. It's technically Zag's toughest. This is the Zag. This is the Zag. This is the Zag Glass Elite. This is technically Zag's. That was three words, and it just jumped an entire paragraph. So how about impact? The old glass plas plas. One of the things you may not realize is. Like when it comes to the Zag stuff, like I ended up just buying so many Zag products because just a crook, hey Monty, just just go, go, get out of here, go. Um, they just had, they just started coming up with like a shotgun of like different products and I think they just decided to see kind of what sticks because stuff that you would find like the Sapphire Defense, the Zag Defender, uh, kind of all those older products do not show up for the iPhone 11s even though you can buy them for the iPhone XRs and use them on the iPhone 11s and so it's kind of an interesting watching them try to figure out what to sell because <laughs> shit the shadows from Monty walking around. Like I honestly just stumbled upon this accidentally. I didn't realize that Zank had done their entire Glass Elite lineup um, for the iPhone 11s and kind of went away with the Glass Plus because it was always, it was Glass Plus for several years and most companies don't change their branding like that but I'm not quite sure this is actually stronger than it was before. I'm saying this because I haven't done the impact test, and that's kind of what we're going to do next. All right, that was so painful to do. You're working hard, Monty?